rules the world. It used to be kings, but now a new book argues that global corporations are now in charge. The book is Power, Inc., the epic rivalry between big business and government and the reckoning that lies ahead, written by former Commerce Department official David Rothkopf, now editor-at-large of Foreign Policy magazine. Welcome. Pleasure to be here. So what are you saying about big business, that there is no cooperation and big business uh, is so big that it makes its own rules? Well, I, I'm saying that not only is it so big that it's made its own rules, but this process of it getting big and sort of pairing back government's prerogatives and gaining new ones for themselves is a couple hundred years old. And so a lot of the stuff that's in the headlines, a lot of the stuff that's being debated in the political arena right now um, actually has old roots and is going to be therefore very hard to reverse. The take Dodd-Frank as one example. Sure. I mean, what are the implications of Dodd-Frank, which was well, passed after the financial collapse? Well, I think the financial collapse shows the, the, the nature of the power of these companies. First, they said, get out of our hair, let us do what we want on Wall Street, and they got it. Then, when they got into trouble because of the greed, they said, bail us out, and they got it. When they got bailed out and they got back on their feet, they said, get out of our hair again, and they got it. And Dodd-Frank was a very, very sort of thin gruel of reform. It, it, it did a few things, but they're more too big to fail banks now than there were before the crisis. Because They're, of mergers or? Because of mergers and because that process wasn't reversed. There are more derivative risks out there now than there were before the crisis. So the, the, there was a sort of an appearance of reform, but because the banks have the ability to buy political influence, they were able to contain it. Mm -hmm. and thus, you know, keep the elbow room that they needed. David, you give many examples in the book, but I was very fascinated about Walmart because I think we've all been to Walmart. Hello, my name is. What are you looking for when you walk in? But you talk about how big Walmart is in terms of the employees and how much money it makes compared to countries. I think the numbers are amazing. Well, there are, you know, Walmart is one of the biggest company, com companies in the world, and it's probably bigger than 150 countries. But if you took the 2,000th biggest company in the world, it's still bigger than 80 countries. There are 2,000 companies out there that have more global reach, more mm -hmm. financial resources, uh, control more land, sometimes control military forces uh, or political influence that's far greater than any uh, country out there. And it, what is the point you're making with that when well, you give I mean, those it, kind of numbers? Well, I mean, what it, do you it, want us it, to know? It, well, first of all, it has an impact on the outcome of things. Who, who do you think had more impact on the global climate talks, Sweden or Exxon? Well, Exxon had more political power, and if it has more influence, you know, they're going to sort of pursue things in a direction that serves their bottom line, and that's what they're legally supposed to be doing. What we need is a balance, particularly out on the global stage we need a balance, and we don't have international institutions that can balance it, and the government's power is shrinking more and more with every day. So answer your own question, what could create the balance? Uh, well, first of all, uh, you, you need to create international institutions with teeth. All the international institutions we got, got were created at the end of the Second World War to be weak institutions. You need to... Re institutions like the World Trade Organization? Or the United Nations or the World Bank or the IMF. But when it comes to some things like, say, derivative markets, we don't have global regulatory yeah. mechanisms. But the IMF is not there to, do, to, to uh, regulate corporations. It is there to help countries that are in trouble. Yeah, th th that's true, but I, I'm, I'm saying the, uh, among the panoply of international organizations mm -hmm. that exist, they were all mm -hmm. created to sort of uh, uh, create the appearance of global governance where there really isn't global governance. People don't have the ability to control what's going on out in the international space, much like at the end of the 19th century, you had big, you know, companies but, like Standard David, Oil taking you, advantage of the space. Yeah. As soon as you say that, I mean, you, you'll have a lot of companies that have had trouble. For example, Microsoft had lots of problems getting into the, to the EC, the European community. Right. And then there was an international organization that prevented them because they had real questions about some issues. A number of American companies in the technology field have had that, those issues raised against them. That's an international organization. Yeah, no, look, I, w this is a power struggle. It's not, uh, um, uh, you know, a route. One, both sides are sort of in a, in a tug of war with each other. But we have to remember that national power stops at borders, whereas global organizations are designed to operate, and they have the ability to actually shop venues. And when somebody pushes back on Microsoft, what Microsoft can say is, well, I'm going to go and locate the factory someplace else. I'm going to sell in a different way. And they have tools at their disposal which gives them an advantage. And in the long run, over the course of a couple of hundred years, mm -hmm. decade after decade after decade, they've been gaining in terms of relative power. 
It all started, David, in your book with a goat with some red horns. That's a big tease for the book. You have to find out what does a goat with red horns mean? It has a meaning. Yeah, it does. It's the beginning of the oldest corporation in the world. That was a tease for your book, David. You're welcome. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.